Okay, I'm going to try this in the morning. I was uh, very tired last night, and I'd like to continue with the uh, narcissist can't do science idea. Okay, I'll uh, probably make several videos like this. Um, I woke up this morning to find that I was blocked by the European Association of Archaeologists uh, for a little, uh, a little bit of Twitter activity that I, I did last night. Uh, just poking them, poking around and seeing what the reactions were. Um, and it, it's funny, not because I get blocked, but because they think that uh, it's going to harm me. <laughs> okay. Uh, and it, it is tied into narcissism. Uh, they think that they took away something. But actually, uh, I would prefer not to see their their tweets because uh, they claimed that I had an agenda and they brought up uh, climate change, man-made climate change or what they called uh, anthropogenic, anthropogenic climate change. It's just if someone uses the term anthropogenic climate change uh, they usually are political in nature. Okay, uh, It just means man-made, man-made climate change which I'm not denying. Okay. But they assume that they lump me into that group of the man-made climate change denial people. And I didn't mention that. But what my discussion was with them had to do with uh, uh, a new branch of archaeology, which is very exciting, very uh, promising, is, is the archaeology of glaciers and ice patches. Okay? I should have probably started with that. Um, the archaeology of glaciers and ice patch ice patches has the potential to give us some fantastic information uh, wonderful finds in very excellent preservation better than dry caves for example in the southwest where uh, artifacts are preserved for centuries and probably even thousands of years uh, they have organic remains in ice patches in various parts of the world that have yielded or that are very well preserved, extremely well preserved mammoths uh, and other things like that where you still see the fur, still see the flesh, everything inside. I mean the entire mammoth, uh, uh, I've seen the one that was, or at least one that was a, a, a baby mammoth or whatever, okay. The, the field is not only new but it is fantastic in its potential. Now, what I see happening with that field since it is new, we're having our current culture meshing with the science, which is problematic to say the least. Okay. Automatically you get current issues mixed in to the science, or what they call science. It's probably not even a science yet because they haven't, uh, as far as I can tell, developed hypotheses that can be tested uh, on, a, on a regular basis, they haven't generated these hypotheses. They're just coming out with the data. They're just coming out with some interpretations. Uh, some of the interpretations are good, some of them are not. Uh, I don't see the testing uh, of, of much of this other than carbon-14 tests to, to, the, to the, try to get the dates on these and so forth. Uh, and at, they claim at this time that they cannot use uh, this type of archaeology to uh, determine or to give indications on climate in the past. Okay. Now, uh, there's many, many things I could talk about in this particular science, uh, but I'm going to keep reading about it and we'll do more. I'll do more videos on this. But for now, um, one of the things that is claimed, like I said, is they cannot use this science to show climate um, histories yet as far as uh, as far as uh, the artifacts go in their condition and the ice patch extents or melting or similar temperatures in the past uh, that we have now similar sizes of ice patches in the past that we have now. Um, 
the comparisons are not uh, fully understood. Okay, just because we can see an ice patch now and the items that may be melted out of the ice, it doesn't mean that the extent of the ice patch is the same as we see it now as it was in the past when those items were deposited. You know what I mean? It's, it's not an exact comparison. Okay, and I understand all that stuff. Uh, and I agree, it's, it's too new to, to uh, develop uh, climate histories from that science. However, if you're going to deny that, don't uh, dismiss my criticisms when I look and uh, uh, make objections to how you're interpreting the data as, as far as what you think the climate was back then. Okay, I'm, if I criticize what I think the climate was, you can't come back and say, no, it's wrong, because you've already stated that you cannot, de you cannot determine climate histories with the science. Okay, that's one problem I see. Uh, narcissists getting into the science are another problem. Uh, most of them are involved in political activism and uh, climate change, current climate change. And there are dummies who, who criticize uh, and deny a climate change and deny anthropomorphic or anthropogenic climate change. Uh, and they, any objections to their work lumps you into the dummies that the, the, the climate change deniers and that kind of stuff, all right? Um, now, I want to stay away from the current political climate and the current political uh, discussions on climate when I'm doing the ice science, the ice uh, archaeology, I mean, okay? So uh, I don't mind comments in that, in that area, but I'm going to be focusing mainly on discoveries in the ice uh, as far as data goes, because they are releasing data, which I am so happy about. Um, we get to see the actual photographs of items. Uh, arrows especially I'm interested in, right? And the arrowheads. But they've also got many, many other different kinds of artifacts. And, uh, you know, you can send me links to articles about finds from ice patches and glaciers and stuff like that. That would be great. Uh, I'm always looking for that because I can... We can gain a lot of information on how they built stuff in the past from these discoveries. All right. But uh, this, is gonna, this is just an introduction to this topic. It is a new field. Uh, unfortunately, I am seeing a lot of modern culture and biases and ways of thinking and narcissism getting mixed in with this science. Okay, and it's, uh, I'm going to try to wade through that and uh, make some reproductions of stuff that's found and give some explanations uh, on what, I, what my interpretations are. And they are going to be biased as well, uh, and they're going to be limited by my knowledge. Um, but I'm also going to give criticisms, and I'm going to let you know if, I, uh, if something happens like I got blocked by. European Association of Archaeologists. I, I still think that's funny because <laughs> they think that they're uh, they think they're doing me a disservice, right? <laughs> Punishing me in some way. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, and but there's a lot of other places I could look. It's not a, it's not a big deal. All right. So uh, I won't discuss particular items. I did. In the last video, I did mention the shoes with the fur on the outside found on an ice patch, and they think that those kinds of shoes were uh, grippy on snow and ice, and it's not true. Uh, if you look at the history of skis, uh, and uh, if you look at, even to this day, people in the taiga use skis with fur on the bottom. Uh, trappers would use skis with fur on the bottom. Uh, I think in this case, the one I saw, he used moose shank fur. Uh, from a moose on the bottom of his skis to make his skis extremely slippery and easy to uh, move across 
uh, the snow and ice. He made the comparison to modern skis. With modern skis, you could maybe travel with them for two to four hours before getting exhausted, but these, with fur on the bottom, you could travel all day long and it'd be fine. Okay, so that kind of thing. Uh, I'll, I'll get into that sort of, sort of stuff if I know the subject or if I've done some research on it. Uh, I'm going to try to make some reproductions of arrows that I've seen that are exposed from the ice uh, and they've put pictures up. They've got arrows with different types of points, which is interesting. They've got, you know, steel, slate, bone, antler. Uh, I haven't seen a stone one yet other than Utsi's material, I don't think, except for the slate. I've seen a slate arrowhead that wasn't revealed. Uh, it's curiously very long and very thin uh, for some reason um, and stuff like that so uh, I guess that's it I am going to uh, probably not do too much twittering <laughs> because I'm very annoying okay uh, but I, I mainly look for reactions if you follow me on Twitter or if you have in the past uh, you'll know my style of twittering okay and i've lost a lot of followers when i first got on twitter i got a lot of followers just to see if i would post some stuff i guess on flint napping and i started posting political stuff and and trolling and arguing with people and trying to figure out what they were thinking and trying to figure out if they were sane or not uh and uh, uh, as far as that goes twitter is not full of sane people it's just the opposite Okay, but it's useful to, to uh, in that respect also to see who is, uh, who is not sane and avoid those people. <laughs> okay, but you don't have to do the work, they block you. <laughs> okay, all right.